Shanghai was bombarded. There were huge civilian casualties. Nationalist troops fought hard, but they were forced to retreat. Shanghai fell in November 1937. In just five months, the Japanese had captured half of China's seaboard. Chiang Kai-shek and his wife appealed to the world for support. To you, who are enjoying the serenity and security of your own homes, I wish to bring a message from the women of war-ridden China. It is this, if you wish to avoid the calamities that are befalling China now and the killing and mutilation of your loved ones and your fellow beings, boycott Japanese goods. The battle for the capital, Nanking, was fierce. Again, the Japanese overpowered nationalist resistance. In December 1937, the Japanese entered the city and they began to butcher civilians. An estimated 200,000 men, women and children were massacred. It was called the Rape of Nanking. By June 1938, Chang was desperate. He ordered the dikes of the Yellow River broken, hoping the flood would stop the Japanese forces. The people in the area were not warned. For them, it was catastrophic. Eleven cities and thousands of villages were flooded. Millions were made homeless. Hundreds of thousands died. And the Japanese continued. They had taken all of Chiang Kai-shek's power base. Now he adopted classical military strategy to trade space for time. Taking advantage of China's huge size, the government and the army retreated thousands of miles inland. Schools, universities, and businesses followed, and people. From all over occupied China, millions left their homes and fled in a massive exodus. The government moved to Chongqing in Sichuan province. It was a remote, undeveloped region ruled by warlords and had never been under Jiang's control. The Japanese bombed Chongqing for weeks at a time. The war effort was hopelessly undersupplied and underfunded. Zhang shored up his government with propaganda and parades. To boost morale, Madame Chiang Kai-shek toured hospitals and orphanages. Chung King held on. 